Hi all, welcome back to Azure Content YouTube channel. This is part 3 in Azure SQL playlist. In this video, we are going to learn the concept of private endpoint in Azure SQL Server. So what is private endpoint? So private endpoint is basically a network interface which will help us to establish a connection between Azure SQL Server and any of the resources or services which is present inside a virtual network with the help of a private connection or a private network. So it is more secure way in terms of network standpoint to connect to Azure past resources like Azure SQL Server or Azure Storage Account with the help of private network instead of public network. Okay. So suppose we have a SQL server which we deployed in the Azure portal. So we have this SQL server and suppose we want to connect to this SQL server. Then generally what we do is we have something called SSMS which we learned in the previous videos as well. So with the help of this client machine which is SSMS, we connect to this SQL server via the public network by whitelisting our IP addresses. If you remember in the previous video as well, we have whitelisted our IP address and then we were able to connect to the SQL server through SSMS. So with this approach, we need to allow the access to this SQL server via the public network which makes it more vulnerable and prone to security attacks and insecure connections. So to tackle this, what we can do is we can establish a private network within the client tool and our SQL server. So with the help of demo, we will learn how we can do that. And for that, we need to have this SSMS inside a virtual network. So before going into the demo part, let me make you understand what is a virtual network and how we can create a private endpoint inside the virtual network to establish a connection between SQL Server and the resources present inside that virtual network. Okay, so suppose we have a virtual network or a VNet and inside this private virtual network, we have something called subnet and inside this subnet, we have Azure virtual machine and inside the virtual machine, we have SSMS installed through which we want to connect to the SQL database. Okay. And we want to access this SQL server via this Azure VM, which is present inside the virtual network. Okay. Now let's take the first approach where we are allowing the access through the public network or we are allowing the public traffic. Okay. In that case, we can access this SQL server by whitelisting the IP address of this virtual machine. Okay. But as we discussed, that is not a good approach from the security standpoint. So to overcome that, what we can do is we can create the private endpoint of this SQL server, which would be present inside this virtual network. And this private endpoint would help to create or establish a connection between the VM and the SQL server. Once this connection would be established, we would remove the access to this SQL server via any public network, which would indirectly make the sense that this SQL server is also part of the private network since all the public traffic would be disconnected from this SQL server once we disconnect or disallow the access from any of the public network. So now with this knowledge, let's try to jump on to the demo part. So if you remember from the previous video, we had provisioned this SQL server called Anu Demo SQL Server. And within this, we had a database called Anu Demo DB. And we were trying to access this via Entra ID and also via SQL authentication. Okay. So right now it is enabled for both Entra ID authentication and SQL authentication. As you can see, Entra only authentication is set to false. Okay. So we can access this via SQL authentication as well as via Entra ID authentication. Now going to the networking part, let me search for network. So here you can see the public access is enabled for selected networks and whichever IP address we would whitelist here would be open for the connection to this SQL server. Okay. So our aim for this video is to disable this public access and to create a private access so that any resource present inside a VNet would be able to access the SQL server through this private endpoint that we are just going to create here. Okay. So before creating the private endpoint, let me first create a virtual network and inside that virtual network, let's first create the VM and then we will come to this creation of private endpoint. 
So let me search for virtual networks and let's try to create a new private virtual network. Okay. So here we need to select the resource group. I would be going ahead with the existing resource group and let's give a name to this virtual network saying a new demo vnet. Okay. And let the region be East US. Let's hit on next. Let's go to next. And here you can see it will allocate a different IP address to this private network starting from this range to this range. Okay. So the virtual network would be having any of the IP address between these ranges. Okay. So let me hit on create button and let's wait for the validation. So you can see the deployment has been initialized. Let's wait. Deployment is in progress right now. Let's wait. Yeah. So you can see our virtual network is created. Let's go to the resource. And here, if we go to subnets, you can see there is a default subnet created automatically. And this is the IPv4 range for the same. And now we want to create a virtual machine inside this virtual network. So let's go to the home and let's try to search for virtual machine. And let's create a new virtual machine, Azure VM. And for resource group, I would create, I would select the existing resource group and then virtual machine name. Let me give a new demo VM. Okay. And other options, let it be the same. Let's go down and here security type. Let me give standard. And in the image, I'm going to go ahead with Windows Server 2019. And let's go down and here the size of VM you can select from the existing sizes. I'm going to go ahead with DC series and you can see it may provide with one CPU and eight GB of memory per month cost. Also, it is reflecting here. Let me go down. So here you need to give a username and the password to connect to this VM. So let me give the name as a new demo VM and let me give a password here. Okay, same password I need to confirm here. Okay, I'm good with that. Let's go down and here you can see select inbound ports. I am going to go ahead with RDP and let's hit on review plus create. So validation is in progress right now. Yeah, validation has passed and now we can hit on create button. Let's wait for the virtual machine to be created. So you can see along with the VM, it is also creating network interface, network security groups, along with the public IP address of this VM. So let the deployment get finished. Yeah. So now the deployment is completed and our VM is ready. Let's go to the resource. Okay. So if we go to the network setting, you can see this VM is associated with the virtual network that we have created, which is called a new demo VNet. Okay. So we are good. Let's go to connect tab. And here you can see the public IP address as well. And here, if we go down here, you can see the RDP connection and to connect through the RDP, we can download this RDP file and you can see it is downloaded. If I click on that, I would be able to connect to the VM via remote desktop and this is the VM username and then I have to provide the password. Let me give the same password that we gave while creating the VM. Let me hit on OK. Now we are expecting that we would be able to connect to the VM. Let's wait. So you can see I am inside the VM right now. So now here let me download SSMS. So that we can connect to the SQL server with the help of SSMS present inside the VM. Okay. So let me go to the edge browser. So here I would search for SSMS download. And let's wait. And meanwhile, let me go to the Azure portal and inside the SQL server. Let me search for networking. So here you can see. Right now, our public access is enabled. So if we try to access the SQL server inside the VM via public network, 
by whitelisting the public IP address of the VM, then also we would be successfully able to connect to the SQL Server because still the public access is enabled. Okay, so let's go back here and we'll open this. And if we go down into this document, you can see the download option is present for downloading the SSMS tool. So let me hit on save. The downloading is in progress. You can see the percentage here. And it's almost downloaded. Let me go to view downloads. And now we can run this exe file so that SSMS would be installed. So you can see it has provided this install button. I'm clicking on that. Installation is in progress right now. Let's wait for a couple more minutes. Yeah, so the installation is successfully completed. Let me close this. And now let me search for SSMS. So here you can see SQL Server Management Studio. Yeah, so now to connect to the SQL Server, we need to provide the server name and the authentication method. Okay, let's go to search for the server name. And let me copy this and let me paste it here. Okay, and then authentication type, let me select SQL Server authentication and the login which we created in the previous video, we will be using the same login and password. Let me do the demo and no login. And the password was welcome at the rate 123. Okay, let me go to connection properties and here let me give the database name demo. Let me search for the database name here. It was Anu Demo DB. Okay. So Anu Demo DB. Okay. Let's try to hit on connect. Let's wait. So you can see it has not failed. It has just given this option to add our IP address. This is the same public IP address of this VM. Okay. So since the server is still open for connection through public network, so we can add this IP address or this IP range to establish the connection. Let me go to the network again. And here, let me add a firewall rule for VM and let me give the IP which is 20.121.116.20.121.116.0.255. So this is the range I'm going to add it and let me hit on save. Okay, so the firewall rule has been updated and the IP has been whitelisted. Let me go back here and let me hit on cancel and let's try to connect again. And you can see this time we did not got any notification. It successfully established the connection to the SQL Server via public network. Okay, we are still in the public network. We have whitelisted the public IP address for this VM. Okay, so let's wait. You can see we can access the DB as well. And we can establish a connection with the DB. So we are able to establish a connection with the SQL Server inside the VM which is present inside a virtual network with the help of a public network access. But now what we are going to do is we are going to disable this public network access. Let me hit on save by disabling this public network access. And now we would not be able to connect to this SQL Server. Let me try to hit on new query. And you can see this error which says deny public network access is set to yes. Okay, so we have denied the public network access. And now what we need to do is we need to go to this private access and we need to create a private endpoint. Let me give the name for this private endpoint saying a new demo private endpoint. Okay, so the validation is done. Let's go to next. And we are having the sub resource as SQL Server, which is fine. Let's go to virtual network and you can see automatically it has selected the virtual network present inside my resource group. OK, so I'm good with that. Let's go next. So this is 
going to create a DNS and let's go to review and create so once validation would be done we will hit on create button yeah so the private endpoint is getting deployed let's wait so the deployment is in progress it will take a couple of minutes let's wait so you can see private endpoint along with the private dns virtual network link and dns zone group everything is getting deployed so let's give a couple of more minutes yeah so you can see the deployment is completed let's go to the resource so this is the private endpoint that we have created which is present inside the vnet where our vm is also hosted so now let me hit on ok and we will try to again connect to the sql server and this time we don't need to whitelist any ip and it should be connecting successfully so you can see within a second it was able to successfully connect to the sql server and we can see all the resources present present within this and we should be able to query through this table as well let me hit on select star from the table and we are successfully able to view the data as well so with the help of a private endpoint we were able to connect to the sql server more privately and securely over a private network and to make sure that this sql server is connected via the private ip address of this vm let me copy this server name and let's go to command prompt and let's hit ping and then server name and let me hit enter so here you can see the server is connected via this ip address which is nothing but the private ip address of our private endpoint let me open this private endpoint and let me go to dns configuration and here you can see the ip address 10.0.0.5 which is the same ip address where our sql server is connected so it is connected via the private network instead of public network anymore as we have also disabled the public network access to this sql server by selecting this option as disabled okay so i hope with this video you got the idea of private endpoint for sql server and how to use it in order to access the sql server via any resource like azure vm present inside a vnet present inside a private network making it more secure so that's it for this video guys i hope you find this video helpful please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet thank you